So I have 20 books here. You'll see that some are turned around because they are to represent the books on my Kindle. Why do I have 20 books here? Why am I going to talk about 20 books today? Well, let's get into it. Hi, my name is Jeanette and I want to thank you for joining me on the channel Jane Reads. So today, the day you are seeing this video, or the day that this video is going up on my channel is May the 10th. And on May the 10th, 2003, me and my husband got married. So it is our 20th wedding anniversary today. So I thought, well, let's do something to celebrate 20. And because it's a wedding anniversary, I thought, well, it'd be kind of cool if I could look at like the gifts for each year and kind of pair them to a book, right? So I'm not going to get the years right. Like, you know, you know that like silver is your 25th, right? But for your, unless the lower years, so like first year paper, five year clock, something I, I don't know. I do not have that list memorized. I did pull it up on Pinterest on a few different sites. I pulled up kind of what the wedding gift is, what the traditional wedding gift is, kind of what the modern wedding gift is, what the traditional color is for that anniversary, and what the traditional flower is for that anniversary. I kind of, as I was going through the list, I'm like, ooh, I can't match books with that. So then I thought, well, let's highlight a book that was released each year and that kind of stands out in my mind. So I went through kind of all the books that I own on my shelf and all the books I read and sorted them by years, by their pub originally published year. Doesn't mean that's the year I read them, but when they were published. So we are gonna go from that, this one is not in the right order because it's smaller than the rest, but we're gonna go from 2003 all the way down to 22, 2022. I did not pick a book for 2023 because we're doing 20 years and I don't have a book that's out yet this year um, that I really want to talk about. No, that's not right. I mean, there are books that have already been released this year that I liked, but yeah, I was thinking, well, it'd be nice if I could find one that was like published in May on my anniversary, but I didn't. I went with 20 books, so I'm ending at 2022. Oh, wow. Okay, so let's put this one aside for a minute. Okay, so I've got my list with my notes, and let's just start. In 2003, <laughs> Before I Wake by Dee Henderson was released. I remember picking this one up back when it was released because it was Dee Henderson. I had read the O'Malley series, which I am currently rereading right now through the month of May, probably June. But yes, yeah, so I picked this one up because it was by Dee Henderson and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it is a romantic suspense and <laughs> it even has the price sticker still on it. Back in the day, it was $17.50. <laughs> I mean, it's probably not that much more expensive now to buy a brand new book. So yes, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about a lot of these books because as I said, I'm talking about 20 books and I don't want you to be here forever and I don't want to be here forever. But so book number one is Before I Wake by Dee Henderson and we are following Nathan and Rhea and they work with the FBI and he's a local sheriff. So, okay. Then book number two is River's Edge by Terry Blackstock. This one was released in 2004. It is book three of the Cape Refuge series and I have read the whole series and I picked this one up, it says in January of 20, I really want to say like 2020, but 2007. So this one is another romantic suspense. And again, I picked it up because it was Terry Blackstock and Terry Blackstock was one of my favorite authors back in the day. And is still one of my favorite authors that as soon as I see a book by her, 
add to my list. <laughs> so yes. Okay, 2005. We go with the small book. <laughs> okay, so this is Jimmy by Robert Whitlow. This is a legal based and every time I think about favorite books by Robert Whitlow, because again, he's one of my favorite authors, I think of this book automatically. I don't know why so much. I just remember that this was a very emotional read and you are following Jimmy, so a little boy, and it says, Jimmy's world is a place where a boy can grow to be a man, even if he's special. Where angels hover, mostly unseen, where danger can happen and hearts can falter, but love is never wasted. Once you look at the world through Jimmy's eyes, you'll never see it the same again. Like, I just, I really, I remember really, really enjoying this book. And it is on my to read list, to reread. And it's one of the 24 books that I prioritize to reread this year. I've not got it to it yet, but I still have seven months left. So, okay. Okay, so in 2006, I am highlighting Hazardous Duty by Christy Barrett. This one is from my Kindle and it was my intro to Christy Barrett's writing. And this is book number one of the Squeaky Clean Mystery series. The summary says, buying a gun to kill your wife, $3,000. Hiring trauma care to clean afterwards, $1,500. Having that same cleaner uncover evidence that frames you, priceless. On her way to completing a degree in forensic science, Gabby St. Clair drops out of school and starts her own crime scene cleaning business. When a routine cleaning job uncovers a murder weapon that the police overlooked, she realizes that the wrong person is in jail. But the owner of the weapon is a powerful foe and willing to do anything to keep Gabby quiet. So yeah, this as of filming this video, this book is free on Kindle right now. So if you have not read it, check it out, check out Amazon, look for it and see if you can get it for free because I would highly recommend this book and the series. So that is my book that was released in 2006. So that is this book. <laughs> in 2007, we have another Robert Whitlow book and this one is Mountaintop. This one is, it just says general fiction, Christian. And I don't really remember a whole lot about this book, but it is also on my to read, to reread list. And it says, can he trust his client's dreams and visions, even if they threaten to destroy his future? Supernatural visions filled with the images of keys, hatchets, hammers, and fires, an eccentric old man in jail, accused of robbing a church and knowing things he has no right to know. A lawyer turned pastor, suddenly summoned to a stranger's cell by a dream. How much will one man risk to defend another when the truth lands him in prison and the only evidence proving his innocence comes by a dream? So it's definitely law based, which I think kind of all Robert Whitlow books are, which is another reason I really enjoy them. So that was released in 2007. And then in 2008, book two of the Squeaky Clean Mystery series, which is Suspicious Mind by Christy Barrett was released. And it says, rock and roll may never die but the king is definitely dead again. To pay off some bills, crime scene cleaner Gabby St. Clair takes a job doing mold remediation. <laughs> but she finds a surprise in the dilapidated home's crawl space. Elvis, dead as a doornail and still wearing his blue suede shoes. How could she possibly keep her nose out of a case like this? So, yeah, and Gabby is such a quirky character and so fun to follow and kind of she gets into these little sticky situations but she knows what she's doing and I just 
it was such a fun, fun series. Okay, so <laughs> in 2009, I promise going forward, we will have some more authors come up. But first, we have another Robert Whitlow book. And this one is Higher Hope. It is book number two, yes, book number two of the Ties of Truth series. It is another legal-based fiction story. And it says, the Ties of Truth series follows one lawyer's passionate pursuit of truth in matters of life and the law. Competition is tough at the Savannah Law Firm, where Tammy Taylor serves as a law clerk. But Tammy's work sets her apart, and the firm's partners see something special in her. So they assign her to a, li a libel case against an abrasive, outspoken preacher who is either a prophetic or a lunatic. Another series I remember really, really enjoying, and it is on my reread list for this year. So hopefully I will get it read and I will talk about it a little bit more in depth when I read it. Okay, 2010. I so wish I had this book in physical copy, but I don't. <laughs> this is, I just read this last September for the very first time. It was my very first read by Sarah Sundin, and she quickly became a very favorite author. And I have since read one, two, I have read five books from her in total since last September, and I do own another one on my shelf, and I have a whole long list to add to my wish list, or I've added to my wish list that I'm looking to get copies of. And that book is A Distant Melody by Sarah Sundin. This is book number one of the Wings of Glory series, and it was originally released in 2010. How did I not know about it back then? Plus, it's a book that was sitting on my Kindle for quite a few couple years before I even read it. I, yeah. <laughs> so, when, as I was reading this book, when I finished this book, I immediately bought books two and book three because I could not finish the story where I had to continue the series because I needed to know what was going to happen with the characters and the family. I just absolutely loved it this book. This is definitely one of my favorite reads of 2022. Um, I'm looking at my notes. I think I've shared everything else. So this is a historical romance and set around World War II between two Americans, but the female is at home and the male character is a pilot for a fighter airplane. A lot of this book is told in letters and I just absolutely love that. And then there's all the scenes like that aren't, aren't letters. So there's, right, it was a nice mix between the two. If you have not read this book, pick it up. <laughs> okay, now, so that's the standard for that one. <laughs> okay, 2011 was Attracted to Fire by Danny no, <laughs> by Diane Mills was released. Honestly, I do not remember a lot about this book. It is another romantic suspense. And I looked at my Goodreads and I rated it five stars when I read it in 2016. And I've kept it on my shelves, but I couldn't really tell you a whole lot about it. It does say only one assignment stands between special agent Megan Connors and her dream of protecting the president. So it's about Secret Service, right? They're the ones that do the protection for the president. So, yeah. Um, it is... No. So it just said, like, I on my spreadsheet on Goodreads, I marked it five stars, but I didn't make any notes of why I enjoyed it so much. But because I marked it at five stars, I have kept it on my shelves. And I would like to reread it at some point to find out why did I like it so much and will I enjoy it as much again before, like, do I want to keep it on my shelves when I don't really remember a lot about it? But so that is 2011. Now, 
2012. 2012 came another one of my very favorite books was released. I have read this book four times. Yes, I read it four times. I just recently read re reread it for the fourth time in this past December. So I did talk about it in a video, so I will link that video below. And that book is The Christmas Bargain by Shanna Hatfield. This is book number one of the Hardman Holidays series. I didn't think that was that the name of the series. And we it is a historical fiction. And we just we meet the characters of Luke and Philly and they end up in a marriage of convenience and kind of as the relationship grows we watch we watch the relationship grow and the love develop between them but then there's so many other community characters involved and just it's just such a sweet story I just I I love this it's it is one of my comfort reads for sure if I want to get into just a, a great and it's really it is really a Christmas themed book like it starts Thanksgiving ish maybe early just before Thanksgiving um, kind of builds up and then comes to Christmas but during that time right you're watching them get ready for Christmas and kind of learn about love and yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know that this book is on Kindle Unlimited, so you can read it that way or you can purchase it through Kindle. Um, okay, now 2013, another one of my favorite books. I have read this one three times. Again, just last year I reread it for the third time. And that book is Five Days in the Sky by Carlo Lorando. This is a book that just sticks out of my brain as a romance book that I just absolutely love. And it is set on the island of, Isle of Skye in Scotland and the descriptions of the island, beautiful, breathtaking. Like it just, if you, it just, it transports you there and like it just fulfilled my desire even more to go to Scotland and the Isle and see kind of the green pastures and the hills and I just yeah and the characters of James and Andre Andrea 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 are just so heartwarming and so fun to follow and their interaction between each other this is a book that every time somebody mentions that they haven't read it it was like when it's like a possibility of reading it I'm like read it read it you won't regret it like you will enjoy it. So yes, I really enjoyed this book and I hate that I don't have a physical copy of it, especially because I gifted a copy to my mom one year and with a few other books, not, I bought it for her and she read it and she liked it. And then she gave it away to somebody and I was like, well, I don't have a physical copy. I want it. But I do have a copy of my Kindle, so it's not that I don't have a copy. Obviously, I've read it three times. Okay. And we are just going on the reread multiple times train here. So 2014, the book It Had to Be You by Susan May Warren was released. This is book number... I did not make the note. I want to say it's book number three of the Christensen family series, but now I'm debating if it's book number two. Yes, it's book number two of the Christensen family series. So in this one, we are following Eden, who is the oldest female of the Christensen family. And she has kind of become the protector, the guardian of her youngest brother, Owen, who is a hockey player in Minneapolis and so she is working at the newspaper there in the obit department and which is not the department that she really wanted to be in and she kind of butt heads a little bit butts butts heads um with another player on Owen's hockey team Jace and just she feels he's a really bad example for Owen 
and then kind of events happen and they get to know each other a little bit more and then there's a mystery that kind of Eden starts looking into and investigating and so there's the romance side of the story you get the family aspect of all the Christensen family and then you have the little bit of the mystery of Eden solving the mystery of who is this John Doe that's in the hospital and I have read this book three times I <laughs> check my notes I read this book three times I've given it five stars each time I absolutely love it and I think the fact that we have Eden who is just kind of the smart sensible um, strong female character and wants to protect those nearest to her and we have Jace who is a hockey player I think just those two characters alone just really draw me in and so then when you get the rest of it again this is a book that I reread just this past December and I did a whole series review on this series so I will link that video in the description okay again we're staying on multiple reads <laughs> I'm gonna have to move some books soon because these are all on my Kindle right now so 2015 the book The Isaac Project by Sarah Monzon was released this is the book that introduced me to Sarah's writing and when I finished it I just wanted to pick up more by her I just absolutely loved it it is a contemporary romance but again, it has a marriage of convenience storyline, which I just absolutely love. I have read this book twice and I loved it each time. And I want to get my hands on a physical copy of it because the cover is just so beautiful. I just love this cover. So Becky's life unravels in a single day. Not only does she catch her boyfriend with another woman, she also receives the news that her grandfather, the man who raised her, is dying. His last wish, to see her happily married. Heartbroken, Becky seeks inspiration in the pages of the Holy Scriptures and finds it, finds it in the story of Isaac and Rebecca. With commitment, their only foundation, can an arranged marriage find happiness in the 21st century? So Becky asks her best friend Lisa to find her a husband. Can the two strangers come together and succeed in building a future? I just loved Luke. He is a godly man trying to live as God wants, a firefighter, and agrees to move across the country to marry a complete stranger. He ends up falling in love with Becky and tries to show her his love through everyday actions. But Becky has been hurt in the past and bottles up and bottles stuff up, which hardens her heart. Can they work out their issues? Luke's uncle tells him that love is a choice and needs to be worked at every day and some days will be easier than others i loved that perspective on love wow i loved that perspective on love love is a choice and needs to be worked at every day and some days will be easier than others the characters are easy to like and i just loved this that the story was told from both points of view because i felt like you really got to know the characters then so yeah again it's another romance book that i highly recommend reading okay and then we're gonna because these were all kindle books <laughs> so 2016 we're back to terry blackstock if i run was released this is book number one of the if i run series this is a series that now that all three books are released read them together all, like back to back like binge this series because each like book one and book two both end with cliffhangers and the story that we meet or are following in book one carries over between book two and book three and Terry Blockstock has been a favorite author of mine as you've seen for years prior to 2000 and she just blew it out of the park with this series I just this is definitely my favorite series by her when book one came out I was like I need book two now like I can't wait a year for book two to come are you kidding me 
So I have read this book twice because I read it when it initially came out and then I reread it when I got my hands on book two and book three. So when somebody asks me what my favorite Terry Blackstock book is, it's not a book, it's a series and it is this one. So in it is a romantic suspense. In this one, we are following Casey who discovers her best friend murdered. And because of events from her past, she doesn't trust cops. Knowing that she will be framed for the murder, she goes on the run. Dylan has been hired by the family of the victim as a private investigator to try to find Casey as the cops have limited resources. Casey is smart and seems to be able to keep one step ahead of Dylan. Even though Casey is running for her life, she can't stop herself from helping others and gets involved in a mystery of a missing teen. This may lead to her downfall, but she is willing to take the risk to help someone else. I just loved Casey. Dylan is led to believe that Casey is a murderer, but as the search deepens, he begins to question what he has been told. Will he be able to catch Casey? And will he be able to turn her in if he does? If you haven't read it, read it. Okay, 2017 is Hardened Line by Karen Whitmire. This is the book that introduced me to Karen Whitmire and I loved it. It is book two of a series and I had not read book one at the time. I just, I was, I had got a copy of it and was like, oh, okay, I'll read this. It sounded interesting. Not realizing it was book two of a series, but that did not fault my enjoyment of this book at all. It is a historical romance. And after reading this one and finishing it, I picked out more books by Karen and I couldn't even tell you the number that I've read by her now. And yeah, I just, she is another auto buy author for me. And I went through so many emotions with this book. Sadness, laughter, cringing, huge smiles, and scared. Amos was not your typical tall, strong, lawman type hero, but rather he's an average guy who was full of heart. He and Grace have become friends over the telegraph wire without ever meeting and yet, as soon as he hears that she is in trouble, he comes running to town to help her. How sweet is that? Amos grew on me more and more throughout the story. The town of Harper Station was formed by women, and they trust very few men. Actually, only one even lives in town. This added an interesting perspective to the story. Grace has found refuge here after her life is threatened, and it should be easy to spot a, a stranger when one comes to town. The women are strong and independent, determined to do things themselves. However, this doesn't bode well for Amos when he first arrives. Can he get past the first impression he makes and earn Grace's trust and maybe even her heart? Beautiful story. Beautiful. Historical set in a town made up of just women and one guy. Yeah, that guy is from book one. Um, I found that out because I read book one afterwards. <laughs> um, yeah, if you have not read this book, I it's another book I highly recommend. Okay, so in 2018, I am highlighting Delayed Justice by Kara Putman. This is book number three of the Hidden Justice series, and it was my favorite of the series. We follow Jamie Nichols went to law school to find the voice she never had as a child, and her determination to protect girls and women in the path of harm drives her in both ways spoken and unspoken. As Jamie, who is now a criminal defense attorney, prepares to press charges against someone who wronged her long ago. She must face not only her demons, but also the unimaginable hurt or forces that protect the powerful man who tore her childhood apart. While this is the third book of a series, it can easily be read as a standalone. 
Jamie is dealing with a lot. She is pursuing charges against her uncle for past events, fighting for her job, trying to help a little girl dealing with abuse, all the while feeling like she is being watched. Then there is Chandler, who is trying to help this same little girl with his therapy dog while receiving threatening phone calls himself. As these two work together to form a friendship develops into much more and allows healing to begin. The characters are dealing with some horrible and heartbreaking trauma, but it is delivered in a way that you know what happened without going into too much detail. It grabbed my attention right from the beginning and includes a strong mix of legal, legal drama, suspense, faith, friendship, and romance. Highly recommend. Okay. Nope. Give me some more Kindle books. Okay. We have another book that introduced me to another one of my favorite writers. And I really need to pick up more by her. So in 2019, No Ocean Too Wide by Carrie Ternaski was released. I have read this book twice. <laughs> I read it when it or originally came out. And then I read it again last year once I got my hands on book two. I did not know that it was going to be a duology when I first read it in 2019. And if I had, I probably would have held off reading it because the ending is like, wait, what? Um, I need more. I need to know what happens. This is a historical fiction and it is following a family who was separated. Um, the siblings were all separated and we follow them from Britain to Canada. And then the oldest sibling comes to try to track down the younger siblings and kind of reunite the family. Heart-wrenching story to think that this actually happened. Like it is based on true events. And it says, between the years of 1869 and 1939, more than 100,000 impoverished British children were sent across the ocean to Canada with the promise of a better life. Those who took them in work as farm laborers or household servants were told that or children were orphans. But was that the truth? Yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. I loved this book. And since I read this book, I have read book two of this series. I have also read, I think, two other books by her. And I have a whole list of books I want to read by her. And I did see that there's another book coming out in September by her that I cannot wait to get my hands on. She just wrote characters that drew me in in a story that I just, I absolutely loved. But I mean, I'm only talking about these books because I love them, as you can see, because I don't know what else to say. <laughs> if you haven't read it, read it. This was my favorite book of 2019 and very close to being one of my favorites of 2022. If it hadn't been a reread, it probably would have been a favorite of 2022. Okay, so 2020, the Fifth Avenue Story Society, wow, I can't even say the name. The Fifth Avenue Story Society by Rachel Hawk was released. This is, um, I want to say contemporary a lot of Rachel's that I've read are dual timelines no nope. I'm looking to see if it even says but it doesn't say um so we follow five New Yorkers yes five New Yorkers who are all strangers they each receive an invite to the Fifth Avenue Story Society but no one seems to be able to explain why them and what this society is but as they spend time together, a, a friendship begins to develop. I really enjoy getting to know these characters and watching that friendship develop, grow, and their lives change in positive ways. They were from, they were different age groups, they were from different backgrounds, different society levels, and just watching them kind of form this group of friends and 
support each other through different things and there is a little bit of romance in it so yeah this is a book that I hope to reread because when I read it I made hardly any notes I gave it five stars but that was it I'm like what was I thinking? I didn't help myself out by not leaving notes. So I hope to reread it so that I can make some notes. And 2021, Terry Blackstock came out with Aftermath. In this one, we are following the events of a bombing and we are following one of the victims of the bombing and we are following a character who has been arrested for the bombing and working with his lawyer because you know that he's set up. That's very, very early in the book. And so you're kind of following, can they figure out who is setting this person up and how it, how is it going? This is another book that I have read twice and I recently just reread it March. I couldn't remember. I like it was very recent. I reread this and it was just as good the second time around as the first time around. But I've already talked about this book kind of in depth in when I reviewed it in March. So I'm not going to talk about it anymore other than it is another romantic suspense. And the very last book that was released in 2022 is The Blackout Book Club by Amy Lynn Green. This is historical fiction. We are following four characters who form a book club and a library in the hopes of saving the library in, in a small town in Maine and kind of their experience with different family members off into the war. And just it's such a fun story to follow and you get to kind of see or hear what books they are reading for the book club and then there's like little notebook entries of kind of their inner thoughts of these club meetings and it's just so entertaining. I again I love this story and this is a book that introduced me to Amy Lynn Green and since reading this book I have now read another book by her and I do this is her third book so I do have one more book that I need to get my hands on to read by her and then I've read her whole list so far um but yes this one I just recently read in March so I talked about that very recently as well so those are 20 books that came out between 2003 and 2022 that kind of stick out in my mind that I really enjoyed reading and the books that I do have video reviews on, I will link in the description below. I do not have them on all the books. <laughs> um, some of them I haven't read for quite a few years. But yes, yeah. so have you read any of these books? And I'd love to just chit chat in the comments. Whatever you want to talk to me about, I'd love to talk to you. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video today and have a good day. Bye.